Most people generally consider clamping down on tax avoidance to be a good thing, but a report from the Centre of Policy for Studies warns of unforeseen consequences on infrastructure and real estate development. It says OECD proposals for restrictions on tax relief could cost the sector £700 million per year. Well, Rachel Kelly is the author of that report and a senior property policy officer at the British Property Federation. Rachel, how, how so? What, what is the case here? Well, the rules that the OECD have proposed to introduce and that the, the UK government are intending to introduce are uh, to restrict tax relief on interest costs. And the, the target of these measures is tax avoidance. It's the big tech giants. It's the global coffee brands. It's people that use the debt. The Starbucks and so on of this yeah, world, yeah. if you will. Um, and, and they can use debt, intra-group debt, normally between companies to shift those profits around to uh, reduce the tax bill that they pay. In real estate and infrastructure, debt is used very differently. Uh, as you know, you know the, to buy an asset or bricks or to do a development is so expensive that actually you need more debt than other industries to make that happen. Uh, but unfortunately, the rules proposed by the OECD aren't actually able to differentiate between that good debt that businesses use for real you know, costs of their business mm. and the bad debt that's used for tax avoidance. Right. And for that reason, real estate and infrastructure are going to be more harder hit than any other industries as a result of these measures. OK, but I mean, surely restricting relief on uh, debt, I mean, isn't that protecting some property companies from themselves and stopping them from overgearing potentially? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, that's in some ways, that's a very different issue, this kind of overgearing issue. And, and I think we're in a much better place than we were kind of back at the pre-crisis levels where arguably gearing was a bit high. Um, but now, I mean, I think the industry is much lower geared, much more appropriately geared. And yes, it is still more highly geared than other sectors, but that's natural considering the kinds of activities that they do and the kind of debt that they take on. Um, I mean, it's no different to a plumber buying piping or a restaurant buying food. Mm. Real estate and infrastructure providers buy debt and they have to pay interest to service that debt. But why not just go to the shareholders <laughs> for capital from them? Why, why borrow when you, when you could just raise it from uh, shareholders? Um, I mean, I suppose because of the quantum involved, normally you can't get that much equity or enough equity to, to make some of these big developments happen. Um, sometimes equity providers require a bit higher return than a, than a bank might require on debt, so debt can be cheaper uh, in, in a lot of cases. Um, so, so essentially, there's just not enough equity out there. You need to supplement it with debt. But briefly, doesn't this help level the playing field between debt and equity? I mean, this is something that's been argued about for years. It has, it has been argued about for years. And, and in some ways, it would be nice to have a consultation about that, levelling the playing field between debt and equity. But these proposals don't actually go all the way there. They still give some relief for debt, up to 30% of earnings, actually. Um, and for most sectors, that will mean that they'll still get a full, relief, full deduction and full tax relief for their interest costs but real estate and infrastructure won't get a full deduction because they use that much more debt um, and so it's going to make building houses it's going to make investing in infrastructure that much more expensive at a time when really we could do without that kind of extra expense all right rachel we've got to leave it there rachel kelly from the bpf thanks for coming in thanks for having me